All right, let's take a look at the tricellular model. Um, if this is the Earth, we hopefully you know a little bit of your geography. This is the equator. And going north and south from the equator, um, I'm going to just highlight the latitudinal lines of 30 degrees and 60. So 30 and 60. So here we've got 30, 60. So that's north. And we also have 30 and 60 uh, south, right? Okay. So we're going to look at how global air circulation um, occurs and that's going to be based on starting, we're going to start with the fact that we know that the most direct rays of sunlight are coming um, right along the equator here. And those direct rays of sunlight are going to warm up um, all that moisture um, along the land and in, in the oceans along the equator. And that's going to actually cause warm, moist air to rise up. Okay. And that air rising up in altitude is going to cause a low pressure system. So this is because if you pull, if you like vacuum the air away, that creates low pressure left behind here. But as that moist, warm air rises, as it's actually getting higher in altitude, it's also losing pressure and it's going to fall back down as rain right along the equator, which is one of the reasons why it's so wet there. So we see a lot of um, this warm, moist air then drops down as rain. Now, once it's lost its moisture, it's going to then circulate out in both directions, okay? And now that air is relatively dry. So this is warm and moist, right? And this is dry. And that dry air is going to descend down at 30 degrees. Okay, and this is actually cool dry, dry air at this point because it's much cooler at the higher altitudes. So this is cool dry air. Um, so cool and dry and that's descending down at 30 degrees. Okay, and that's going to create a high pressure system here. Okay. So where we had all of this low pressure system and you know, cloudy and the rain, you know, lots of rain happening. This is where we see most of the tropical rainforests. But where the cool dry air is descending, all of this dry air, this is where we see the band of deserts. So we see deserts generally north and south around 30 degrees. Okay. Now, air likes to travel from high to low pressure systems. So once it's down here, back along the, the surface of the earth, it's gonna wanna actually travel back along the earth to the low, so from high to low pressure, okay? So we're gonna see it circulating back again towards the equator. And as it does that, as it's moving along the land, it's going to pick up the moisture from the ground and the oceans and, and everything. And so it's becoming more and more moist as it's reaching the equator again, where it then gets warmed up by the warm sun. It then will rise because it's so warm. The rain will come down and then it will again descend back. So this cell is called the Hadley cell. Okay. And that's explaining kind of why we have our tropical rainforest here at the equator and our deserts at 30 degrees. There's two more cells that we have. Uh, the next one between 30 and 60 is called the feral cell. And the feral cell is gonna be kind of similar to the Hadley cell um, in, in the fact that we're gonna go from the high to low. And in fact, that air coming down at 30 degrees can go towards the equator, but there's also a low pressure system at 60 degrees. And so it's gonna travel that way as well, okay? And that low pressure system is gonna cause, there's gonna be plenty of rain and clouds, and we're gonna get that to rise back up again. Okay, so it circles back up, drops the rain, and then um, when it comes there, it will circle back to the dry. So this is the feral cell. Okay. And that happens here as well, so we're gonna get the rain. This is why, you know, in the northern latitudes, kind of where we are, we see a lot more rain than in the drier places as we move further south, okay? So again, it's this traveling from high to low pressure along 
that's going to allow it to pick up all that moisture. And that low pressure system then is going to be associated with the air, you know, moving up. We've got the clouds coming down in the rain. And then lastly, we have the po polar cell. And that's going to be similar because this air then can descend along the top and the bottom at 90 degrees, right? And that's going to be a high pressure system now. And this is the cool, dry air, right? And then it's going to move along, okay? And you can, when it's moving along the ground, you know, in any of these directions, it's going to pick up some, some moisture and some warmth, which then allows it to circle back again. So this one is the polar cell, okay? And you can imagine cool, dry air, well, that's going to be things like tundra, right? And this is going to be more of our, you know, temperate forests along, you know, 60 and a little bit lower because it gets more moisture, okay? So the tundra and the, the polar regions tend to be quite dry compared to, say, the temperate forest or the boreal forest. The taigas are along here too, um, okay? So, again, you can kind of track the high-low pressure, high-low pressure, um, and then a lot of this starts with that direct sun rays coming in, warming up all of this air so it, it, it will rise, creating that low pressure system. And then we have this circulating Hadley cell where it comes down at the high pressure. And then the feral cell is going to do something similar but in the opposite direction. So you can kind of track them from high to low. And then this tricellular model is why we have the um, dispersal of the biomes along these different places on the planet.